Hi, Doug here with Air Zenith. Today we'll be rebuilding the Air Zenith OB2 compressor. The things you're going to need for today is first the Air Zenith rebuild kit. This rebuild kit comes with the full piston assembly with new piston ring and bearing. It also comes with two O-rings for the cylinder wall and an O-ring for the valve assembly, as well as a new set of valve plates for inside the compressor valve block. The tools you will need today are a 5mm and 4mm Allen wrench. You will need a ball joint separator fork, also known as a pickle fork, a P2 sized Phillips screwdriver, a pair of tweezers, or a small piece of metal to help remove the O-rings, and some blue Loctite to put everything back together. Step 1, you're going to want to drain your tank and then disconnect your leader hose. Next, you want to remove the relay from the socket or disconnect the compressor electrically. Now you want to grab your P2 Phillips screwdriver and remove the four retaining screws that hold the cooling fan into place. It's a good idea to put these screws into a safe place so you can find them later. A magnet works well. Simply lift up and pull the fan off and set it in a safe place. Now grab your Allen wrench and remove the four head bolts on the top of the compressor. These may be tight because they're held in with Loctite. Once all four are removed, you can wiggle the head to remove it, or you can tap it lightly with a rubber mallet if it's being difficult. Next, remove the valve plates, noting the notch and what direction it is facing. It faces the front of the compressor. Next, the cylinder wall, you want to wiggle side to side while lifting up slowly and catch the piston with your finger as to not let it fall. Now grab your Allen wrench again and remove the four Allen bolts holding the crankcase cover onto the compressor. Once all four screws have been removed, you can wiggle the case off or again tap it lightly with a rubber mallet. Be careful when removing not to drop the piston onto your work surface. Set it in a safe place. You can now grab your Allen wrench again, this time the large one and the small one. The large one will go into the counterweight as a lever, the small one into the piston. You'll hold the one steady while removing the front piston's retaining screw. Once loose, you can continue to remove it by hand. Make sure to set that bolt into a safe place. You will now need your ball joint separator fork. Place it between the piston assembly and the counterweight. You're going to want to tap down with your rubber mallet or with your hand, preferably, to pry it loose. Once broken free, it should slide off the shaft freely, as shown. You're going to want to grab the new piston assembly from the rebuild kit. Make sure the surface is clean of any material and slide it on. It should slide on fairly easily. If not, you could tap it with the butt end of your Allen wrench. Now grab your screw and your blue Loctite. You want to put a small dab of blue Loctite onto the retaining screw. This will keep it from vibrating loose. A little bit here goes a long way. And you can go ahead and tighten the screw back into the front of the compressor. Note you'll want this one pretty tight. You can use your second larger wrench to retain the counterweight while you're tightening. Now grab your crankcase and slide it carefully over top of the new piston assembly and back onto the compressor. Make sure nothing is trapped between the front crankcase and the compressor. You'll now grab your Allen wrench and your Loctite. You're going to put a small dab of Loctite onto each bolt. And thread it into the compressor body. Having the compressor removed from the vehicle makes this step a lot easier, but can be done with it still installed. Once all four bolts are in place, you're going to do a cross pattern to tighten the bolts to prevent cracking or warping of the metal chassis. So you'll do diagonals and then go to the other opposite corner and do the diagonal to tighten everything down. Next, you want to grab your tweezers and the cylinder wall from earlier. The tweezers or a small piece of metal can be used to remove the old O-ring from its seat. You want to grab the new O-ring from your rebuild kit and place it into the groove of the cylinder wall. Make sure there's no debris in the slot. Simply repeat this step for the other side of the cylinder wall.
Press down lightly to make sure it is seated into place. Now you're going to want to squeeze the walls of the piston ring together very gently to slide the cylinder wall into place. You don't want to bend the cylinder wall at this or bend the piston ring at this point with the cylinder wall. Once in place, you slide it down, look inside, and make sure you have a uniform gap around the piston. You can now grab the head of your compressor and your tweezers. We're going to be removing the O-ring inside the head of the compressor. This one can be tricky to get out, but will be removable. Replace it with the new one from the Rebo kit. and press down gently to make sure it is seated. You can now move on to the valve plate assembly. If you have a hard time getting these two apart, you could tap them onto a surface such as your table or workbench to separate them. Do not attempt to pry them apart unless absolutely needed. You'll grab your tweezers again and you're going to want to remove the valve plate assembly. Often this can get stuck in here pretty well, so be careful. Once removed, you're going to remove any debris from the inside there. If you need to, isopropyl alcohol will clean the surface well. Make sure it's fully dry, and then you can reinstall the new valve plate from the rebuild kit. This o-ring can be tricky, so be patient. Make sure everything's clean, and then slide your plates back together, noting the notch. You want to make sure the notch lines up. Make sure your o-ring is clean one last time and you want to set your valve block assembly with the notch facing the front of the compressor and the open side down to the o-ring, the flat side on top. Proper orient orientation is very important here. You now want to place the head onto the compressor with the filter facing forward. You want to grab your four head bolts and you want to put a dab of blue Loctite onto each bolt. Again, a little bit goes a long way here. You might have to wiggle the head slightly to get the bolts to go fully down across all the assemblies into the head. Once all four are completed, you can grab your Allen wrench and you can tighten down the head bolts. Now you might have to wiggle the assembly to get everything lined up perfectly. Be very gentle in this step. You want to get all the bolts loosely placed then slightly snug. Once they are all snug you're going to want to tighten them down in a cross pattern like you did the crankcase. This is very important to make sure you have equal torque on all the bolts. You can now reattach the fan assembly by sliding it down onto the top of the head of the compressor lining it up with the bolt holes. You want to grab your P2 Phillips screwdriver and your screws. You can now thread these screws back into the holes. Being that they're self-tapping screws going into anodized aluminum, they may be a little tight. This is normal. You don't have to worry about cross-threading for they make their own threads. You can now remove the check valve from the compressor with the included wrench in the rebuild kit or a standard crescent wrench if needed. Once removed, take it to a clean space. You can then open it up. Two wrenches will work or a wrench and a vise to get it apart. It comes apart counterclockwise. Once open, you want to clean it of any debris, any gunk or any dirt that has built up on the inside. You can use simply water, soap and water, or for the tough stuff, isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. Make sure everything is clean and the surface is made up nice and tight. This prevents any air leaks. Once clean, you can reassemble. The key part here is you're gonna need some white Teflon tape, or you can also use joint compound that I'm using here. It is recommended to use the pipe paste if you have it. You want to apply an, enough to cover the threads fully around the fitting. Again, this is to prevent air from leaking out of the check valve. You can now thread the assembly back together and either tighten it in a vise or with two wrenches. It is important that you get this tight.
When you go to install the check valve back onto the compressor, you want to use the same joint compound or white Teflon tape to apply liberally to the threads before attaching it back to the compressor. And you can go ahead and thread it back on the compressor and you want to tighten it down until snug and then a quarter turn. It is important if you over tighten this step you could risk cracking the head. You can now grab your leader hose and reattach it to the check valve. And tighten it down with your wrench. Now you can remove the air filter using the included Air Zenith wrench or a thin profile wrench. It unthreads counterclockwise from the head of the compressor. When you have the filter off, you can remove the front cover by removing it the opposite of normal threads, so clockwise will loosen it. It uses left-handed threads. This is very important, that way it doesn't vibrate off while running. Inside, the filter element can be removed, it can be vacuumed or blown out with compressed air, as well as you can blow out the filter medium or rub it with your finger to remove any particulate. You can now reassemble it. Remember, you want to turn to the left to tighten it. It is opposite of normal threads. This can be tricky, so be patient. This can be done with it still installed on the compressor, but removing it makes it a little bit easier. You can now thread it back onto the compressor, clockwise. And once installed back on the compressor, you can use the included wrench to tighten it back up. You have now fully rebuilt your Air Zenith OB2 compressor. You can now go plug it back in and give it a test run. Thanks for watching.